Welcome everyone. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about low flow versus high flow oxygen delivery systems. As I really think this is something when we teach it in school, students memorize the sentence, but they don't really know what it means. And then when they experience a test question, whether it's a test question in class or on the MBRC exam, they're not really sure what to do with the test question because they've memorized the, the sentence instead of trying to understand the application of the device. So today I'm going to try to make this make a little bit of sense for us, okay? So when we're talking about high flow and low flow systems, what we really need to think about are two different flows. Number one, the total flow from the device. For example, this is a very simple nasal cannula. We put the flow meter, when we attach this to a patient, we run the flow meter anywhere from one to six liters per minute. So let's just say I set this nasal cannula up on a patient and I turn my flow meter it onto two. The total flow from this nasal cannula then is two liters per minute. All right, we're gonna compare that total flow from the device to the patient's inspiratory flow. The patient's inspiratory flow is how fast they are inhaling, okay? It's the speed at which they inhale. So if we've got the patient on at two liters per minute and the patient is inhaling 15 liters per minute, that means we have a low flow system going on, okay? So the definition of a low flow device is that the patient's inspiratory flow exceeds the flow from the device. So I'm just gonna make a chart and I'm gonna do it like this. Here's the device and here's the patient. And we're comparing the flow rates. So total flow from the device, let's say I have a nasal cannula at two liters per minute. And the patient has an inspiratory flow of 15 liters per minute. So what this means is that when we've got this nasal cannula hooked up to the patient, it's providing them two liters of their needed 15. So here's the deal. If the nasal cannula is only given two liters and the patient needs 15, they're getting that extra 13 liters per minute from the atmosphere. You know, they're pulling it from room air into their nose and mouth. And so what that room air is doing is diluting the oxygen source, which means they're going to get a variable FiO2 because each time we breathe in, it's at a slightly different speed. So a low flow system is when the inspiratory flow from the patient exceeds the total flow from the device. And therefore, that makes the FiO2 variable. All right, so when we're using low flow devices, a lot of times these are some qualifications or things that we look at to determine, do we want a low flow or do we want a high flow device? So basically if the patient's tidal volume is normal, meaning when you're at bedside and you're just looking at their chest and watching them breathe, you see normal chest excursion, okay? They've probably got a normal tidal volume. Typically we use low flow devices if the respiratory rate is less than 25 and if the patient has a regular breathing pattern. All right, so this is a low flow device. Now, let's switch over to something like a Venturi mask. If you are running your Venturi mask right, it will function as a high flow device. Again, we're comparing the two things, the, the total flow from the device and the patient's inspiratory flow. So this mini mask that I have right now, again, we're gonna go the device, and the patient. This Vinny mask, when I have it hooked up to the flow meter at eight liters per minute, there's that mathematical equation, the magic box, that will make the total flow from this device is about 32 liters per minute. Now again, let's say the patient's breathing an inspiratory flow of 15. So what this is meaning then, when I have this hooked up to the patient, the flow's on eight liters a minute, this 40% is coming up out of this mask at a speed of 32 liters per minute. And when the patient inhales, they're only inhaling at a speed of 15. So absolutely everything they need when they inspire, every bit of their total flow is met by this mask. And as long as it's met by this device, that FiO2 is gonna be precise. It will not vary, it will not change, it will be 
40% each and every breath because the total flow delivered by the device exceeds the patient's inspiratory flow. Okay, and here are things that we typically look at as far as qualifications. If the person's tidal volume is abnormally low or abnormally high, basically if you're at bedside looking at the patient and you're looking and you can barely see them breathe, that's a low tidal volume. Or you're looking and they're really hyper expanding, that's a high tidal volume. That typically means that they've probably got a little bit of an irregularity in their breathing pattern. They may benefit from a more precise FiO2. And oftentimes, if their respiratory rate is greater than 25, they could benefit for a, an FiO2 that is more precise. So just remember, low flow systems, the patient's inspiratory flow exceeds that from the device. The FiO2 is variable. And a high flow system, the device's total flow exceeds the patient's inspiratory flow, and the FiO2 is stable. Hope that helps.